Good morning, folks. I hope we're all caught up on the special videos because we've got another one coming tonight. Answering your questions and diving deeper into the catastrophe evidence at the two closest stars and trying to time the wave's arrival at our system. But this morning we begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on our star with the previously analyzed bright spots and some patchy coronal hole signatures in rotation. The sunspots have actually begun to decay, but the filaments took over the activity. Right side, filament might be hard to track, so let's go ahead and rewind the tape and put it right back where it was, so now you can watch how it releases at the northern reach and curls down along the coronal fields to be fed into the solar wind sparsely. Activity on the south couldn't quite match the launch, but it was pretty enough for a second look. Looking at the solar wind, right after yesterday's show we saw the phi angle flip. Simply put, where the blue line goes from riding the lower half of the top panel to the top half of the top panel over on the right indicates a solar wind magnetic field reversal, the one we get every two weeks. It alone was enough to modestly annoy Earth's magnetic field and quickly end the cosmic ray concerns as the KP went up. So let's go right to Southern California, where the weather outside is frightful. Low dropped in from way to the north and is bringing a major cold spell with it. We're going to watch the forecast here through tomorrow to see the snow heading for Baja, Arizona, and New Mexico. And as the tape rolls, let me comment that despite the fact that the United States saw eight record cold or snow events before winter even began, this country has yet to see something like what's happening over in India right now. How cold is record cold? Imagine you live somewhere where there's no point in putting in heat because the climate is too warm. Imagine if the whole city was like that and it got so cold they had to set up shelters, not for the homeless, but for those with homes. I'm not saying they don't have homeless help, I'm just saying even people's homes weren't enough against the cold. Okay, let's ease into this science stuff with a confirmation of the 200 years to Vry cycle of the sun. This is the cycle whose most important harmonic is two, at the 400 year scale where grand solar minima are most likely to occur. This is the first ever signal of that cycle from the ancient and often sparse Far Eastern records, brilliant gap filling from Korea and Chinese documents allowing the breakthrough. And now we're moving on to LB1. You remember, that alleged 70 solar mass black hole that had so many people up in arms that we spread the dissenting articles out over three news days. Well, at least one of those dissenters is a little late to the table, but alas, the problems continue for the team that made that very, very big claim. It's just not possible to get that much mass in any small enough region in this part of the galaxy without major surrounding effects, which they do not see. There is a fascinating proposal to discard dark energy here, not sure if it will catch on, but the idea is, get this, the universe is not endless, but rather it has walls. Not to say there is nothing beyond the walls, it's just not part of our verse. Very cool thinking there. But much cooler is that the dust studies keep coming and there's no plans on their stopping. From this one about direct dust production, not from a nova burst, but from the stellar wind itself would be huge in getting mainstream to rethink dust at the circumstellar and interstellar scales, which is greatly needed, as professors subscribe to astronomy and astrophysics will read about in a month when it gets published, since the simplified framework they currently use to model dust, which either ignores distortions or uses a single decorrelation parameter, has biases that may be even greater than can be reconciled by the next planned generation of scopes and satellites. And speaking of dust, hello Pipe Nebula. This beast is sometimes visible in the night sky when it's clear, especially if you've got a new moon and it's not polluting the view. So, they were aiming to find and trace the magnetic fields in the core pipe and hopefully you can see the dark void in the middle, but they noticed some peculiarities when trying to map different regions with different methods and filters. And so they went deeper into the middle and wound up with this. It is indeed an hourglass, Z-pinch shape, the interior region of the Taurus jet model. Bravo and brava to these folks, and to her, recognizing that not only does Africa have a ton to contribute to the paleomagnetic record, which has not been widely pursued, but she's giving us the roadmap. Switching gears here for our top two stories as just a day after a warped galactic disk article disappointed us but for one graphic, another comes and largely mocks the former with but one excellent and 
very sector-telling galactic plane graphic. And now for those who really get that we are back to the magnetic reversal and solar and maybe even galactic shift discussion, this is what the aurora looks like, right? Gorgeous plasma interactions from the solar wind hitting the top of the sky, mostly nitrogen and oxygen, seen all the time. But folks, this is not aurora. This is Steve. Steve is indeed coincident with space weather, but can be seen at much lower latitudes, and its purple tube with green streaks have been somewhat of a mystery, and that takes a new turn now as recent particle precipitation hypotheses are somewhat thwarted with one demonstration that it is actually a form of lower energy excitation. This means that it is not the direct solar wind integration and interaction. It is a secondary disturbance within the Earth system. So folks, when they say that Steve might have always been around and we just didn't pay attention or notice him enough, that's hogwash. Aurora watchers are diligent, and the flood of new videos and photos and studies is indeed indicative of their increased occurrence of late, which is obvious if you follow those photographers' blogs. With Earth's magnetic field changing so much, I wouldn't be surprised to see much more of them and many more varieties we haven't yet seen. Who knows how disruptions and waves will propagate as the field evolves in its descent. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support and we hope you come back this evening for part two on that evidence at the other stars. You had many questions. We already had some things we wanted to dive deeper into as well. I'll see you in a few hours for that one. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.